Today I'm going to go over the second part of the chapter 10 comprehension check. This is still from the chapter called It's a Gas. So before we get going on the second part, starting with question number six, you need to be introduced to a new gas law. There's a lot of laws in this chapter, so I highly recommend keeping a card or a piece of paper and just adding to it these equations as we get through them. So the new one for today is called the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law, we are given PV equals NRT. So P is pressure, V is volume, N is moles, R is actually a constant and that I've written down there, and then T is temperature. And so you're gonna see this in several equations we're gonna use. When we're using the ideal gas law, we're using it at something we call STP, which stands for standard temperature and pressure. Frequently these problems will say this is done at STP. For these problems done at STP, what that means is that they are done at one atmosphere of pressure and zero degrees Celsius. So number six tells us that a sample of gas contains 18.45 moles at STP. And it's asking us to find the volume. And so I'm going to use that ideal gas law. So we said it's PV equals NRT. Now we're just gonna to start to fill in. There's a few of these problems that are just asking for different variables. This one, I'm looking for the volume, and so I'm gonna fill in what I know. And it is hidden, the pressure is actually hidden in that STP. So we talked about STP, standard temperature and pressure, is at one atmosphere. So I'm gonna use one atmosphere for the pressure, and I'm looking for the volume. They give me the number of moles in the problem. R is a constant, and then temperature, I actually have to figure out and it's at STP, which is at zero degrees Celsius, but you have to remember that gas laws always use Kelvins, and so we have to convert that to Kelvins, and so in Kelvins, zero degrees Celsius is 273.15. And so you can kind of remember some of the units for the ideal gas law if you look at the units in the R constant. So it has volume is in liters, so you're gonna need your volume in liters, pressure is in atmospheres, and temperature is in Kelvin. So that'll help you make sure that you get your units in the right, um, in the right place. So I'm just gonna solve this through and solve for V. So you're gonna multiply everything and divide. And when I get my answer, I get 414 liters. I know it's liters and not milliliters because the unit for R is liters. Okay, so number seven is another ideal gas problem. It does not using STP, they give me some different information for this one, but I do know that I don't have a gas in one scenario and I'm comparing it to in a different situation. Kind of like the past problems where we had the balloon on the surface of the water and we pushed it down and we were comparing. We're not doing that, so I just have one gas. And so I'm gonna use the ideal gas law for this. Now they trick you because they don't put what they give us in the right unit. So we have to do a lot of conversion. But the question tells me a sample of gas that contains 12.5 moles is at a pressure of 735.6 torrs. Tells me its volume is in kiloliters, something we almost never use in this class. And it wants me to know the temperature. So I'm just gonna take information and plug it into the ideal gas law to use it. But if you'll notice from this one, I need liters, not kiloliters. And so let's take this and convert it to kiloliters. So, and then we also have to take the pressure and we have to put it in atmospheres. So let's do that pressure first. I'm gonna start with the 735.6 torr. And if you'll remember, we talked about the unit of one atmosphere is 760 torr. So I'm just gonna use the factor label method, put torr on the bottom. put atmospheres on the top, tours cancel out, and you get 0 0.967 atmospheres. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put volume in liters, and if volume is 0 0.45 kiloliters, if you're doing, um, King Herod died drinking chocolate milk. 
Still, we're going from kilo to liter. So it's one, two, three. So it's three jumps in that direction. So one, two, three. So it's 450 liters. So you may actually have to work that out because we don't frequently go from kiloliters to liters. So now I'm just gonna take all this information and plug it into the ideal gas law, which is my pressure. That's my pressure times my volume times N numbers of moles All right, so when I plug it all in, I get the pressure that we calculated in atmospheres times the volume that we calculated, and that is equal to the number of moles times R times T. And pause it, check it yourself. You should get T equals 420. If you'll remember, this is a gas law, so temperature is measured in kelvins. So for question number eight, I'm just going to write the equation. I'm not going to write the whole question, but it basically tells me a chemist is making ammonia according to this equation. And so they're taking some nitrogen and it actually tells me 150 liters of nitrogen. And they're reacting it in excess hydrogen. A chemist is taking 150 liters of nitrogen in excess hydrogen and they're doing this reaction at standard temperature and pressure and the question is what volume of ammonia will be made? Now it, the, one of the important details that this question tells you is that the reaction is done the entire time at standard temperature and pressure and so right before this question in the book you're introduced to a law called Avogadro's law and Avogadro's law tells us equal volumes of all the gases at the same temperature and pressure will have the same number of molecules or atoms or moles so as long as the temperature and pressure stays the same we can actually use the balanced chemical equation to help determine this and so this is what I mean by this is so since this pressure stays the same I am not, I've got to figure out what laws I'm going to use. That's always the hard part. I'm not comparing necessarily one volume of gas and changing its situation. Yet this, there's a reaction and there is a reaction happening and there is a change in situation, but I'm changing what gas I have to. It's not taking that balloon of gas and submerging it to the bottom of the lake. So I'm not going to use the combined gas law. I cannot use the ideal gas law because I would have more than one unknown. My unknown would not only be the volume, but I also don't know the number of moles that's going on here. I am only told the liters. And so I can't use, I'm gonna think about this in terms of Avogadro's law. 150 liters of nitrogen is gonna have the same amount of molecules in it as ammonia. So I'm really gonna use my coefficients here. And it's gonna feel a little bit weird at first because we're just using coefficients in a different way. I know that one liter of nitrogen, if I'm thinking of my coefficients as volume, can produce two liters of ammonia. So I'm going to start with 150 liters of nitrogen, and I'm going to use those coefficients to convert into ammonia. So I'm going to put liters of nitrogen on the bottom and liters of ammonia on the top, and these numbers since the pressure and temperature stays the same, can come from the equation. So I have one liter of nitrogen and it produces two of ammonia. So for this math, you would just take, for this math, you would just take 150 and multiply it by two. And I get 300. So I just, when I take the 150 and multiply it by two, I get 300. And so it reacts in a one to two ratio. And so it just may take a while for you to get used to looking at coefficients as being a volume, as long as the standard, as long as the temperature and the pressure stays the same throughout the experiment.
Question number nine gives us a formula equation of solid zinc and we're reacting it with a liquid of hydrochloric acid and zinc chloride to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And so the question is, tells us several bits of information. It tells me that I have 850 milliliters of this and it has a five, molar, five molarity concentration. It also tells me that I have excess zinc. Can't write excess. And I'm, I'm looking for the volume of hydrogen gas. So first I'm gonna figure out what formula or what one of these many equations I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna eliminate the combined gas law because I'm not dealing with one gas in two different scenarios but I do have everything to calculate using the ideal gas law. So remember, as we are doing this, we're looking for the volume of the only compound that is a gas. And so everything that we put into the ideal gas law needs to have to do with this hydrogen gas. So if we take PV equals NRT, it tells me the whole reaction is at STP and so the pressure is one atmosphere. I don't know volume. And then I have to have number of moles. Well, I don't know it, but you learned in the last chapter how to calculate it. So if you would like the challenge, pause it and go ahead and calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas and then come back and check. All right, so I'm gonna start with the 850. They actually give it in you, to you in milliliters, so you're gonna to need to convert it to liters. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the molarity, and that is gonna give me the number of moles. Now, it's not the moles of the hydrogen gas. This is all for the HCl. And so when you do that, you get 4.3 moles of HCl. Now you're gonna take your coefficients from your equation and go from HCl to hydrogen gas. And I know two of HCl reacts with one of hydrogen gas. Um, and so when I calculate 4.3 and I divide it by two, yes, I get 2.15, but this only has two significant figures. So I have 2.2 moles of hydrogen gas. So this is my N, 2.2. And I'm gonna multiply it by R, which is given. Let me erase this, it's getting in the way. So then I'm gonna do times temperature. They give you your temperature, they tell you it's at STP, which is zero degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvins. One times the volume equals 2.2 times your R times your temperature. And when you solve that, you get a volume of 49 liters and this is uh, your H2 gas. Before we get to number 10, you need to be familiar with Dalton's law of partial pressures. And what that tells us is that if we have a mixture of gases, all their pressures will add up to be a total pressure of gas. All right, so since it tells us exactly like what we can use this law to tell us also what percentages or fractions the gas is of different molecules, and then we can try to calculate the number of moles. So the question in number 10 says, in a mixture of two gases, the partial pressure of oxygen is 341 tors, and the partial pressure for nitrogen is 761 tors. And it also goes on to tell us how many total moles we have. So I like to try to envision I have a balloon and in this balloon, I have 341 
tours of pressure from oxygen, 761 from nitrogen, and floating around in the whole balloon, I have a total of 6.78 moles. And so what the question is asking is, of that 6.78 moles, how many is oxygen and how many is nitrogen? We're gonna try to calculate, it's like a fraction, they call, but similar to a percent of oxygen or the percent of nitrogen that is in the gas. So before we can do that, we're gonna use this law of partial pressures and we're gonna calculate the, the total pressure in the scenario. So we get total pressure by just adding 341 and 761. Now in the past, we had to convert to atmospheres if we were using the ideal gas law, but as we're not using that for this one, so we can keep it in tours. So if I add all these up, I get 1,102 tours of pressure in this like vessel or balloon or whatever you're thinking about. Now, I wanna know what percentage of that is oxygen. So I'm just gonna take my 341 for oxygen and I'm gonna put it over the 1,102 because this is gonna give me basically like the percent of oxygen in this total pressure. So if I do this, I get 0.31. I'm gonna leave it as a decimal and not put it as a percent, but you could move it and say 31% of the pressure is oxygen. And so for nitrogen, you're gonna take 761 and you get 0.69. So these should add up to one whole, like the whole percent of the, or the whole vessel should equal one. And so this is like the part of it, and this is the part that's nitrogen. So now we're gonna take this, basically our percent or your decibel, and we're gonna use it to figure out the moles. So if the whole thing has 6.78 moles in it, I just need to figure out what 0.31 of that is. So you take that times, and you get 2.1 moles of oxygen. And I'm just gonna take the 0.69 and multiply it by the moles also. And I get 4.68 moles of nitrogen. And a way of checking yourself is you can add these up and they should equal what you start with. They're maybe off by a little bit from rounding, but you should be really close. Question number 11 tells us, I think they say it, leave it or leave it lake in California. And it's at 3,050 meters altitude. And at that altitude, it's, it's a little bit above sea level. So you have less air pressure. And so your air pressure is actually 522 torr. And if you'll remember, 760 torr is one atmosphere. So your air pressure is a lot less. And the question's asking if you have water at this altitude, will it boil above 100 degrees Celsius, between 90 to 100 degrees Celsius, or below 60 degrees Celsius? And so the temperature at which water boils actually happens when the vapor pressure of the water is equal to the vapor pressure surrounding it. And so as our altitude changes, the pressure above the water changes and that changes the temperature actually at which water boils. And so there is a chart in your book on page 522 that you're gonna look for this. I'll try and show it to you, but we'll see. So if you'll look at your chart here, I'm gonna find the pressure of where we're at. And so the pressure where we're at is at 522, which isn't actually on my book, but it's less than this. So if it was at 525, I know that the water would boil at 90 degrees Celsius, but it's less than that. So I know that the water is actually going to boil between 60 and 90 degrees.